Father, I thank you that we get to stand in this place and celebrate the greatest name, the name that's above every name, the name that's worthy of our praise, that's worthy of us remembering and mentioning. It's the only name that changes lives for all eternity. And so God, thank you that in this place, we have the opportunity not only to celebrate it, but to experience the power of the name of Jesus. And so thanks, God. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. You can have a seat. You know, not only do we have a really good God, I think we got a really good band. What about you guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just so cool to be able to come in here and, and, and just be, be a, a part of their passion and their talents and their gifts. And in fact, everyone in the church who serves and, and we get experience what God's doing in all of us is, is a really cool thing. And, and see, that's why when we do church here, I mean, when we show up and, and we are the church, we always say, you don't go to church, we are the church. And uh, it's, it's because together we're discovering what life with Jesus is all about. And so it doesn't matter if you're first time here, you've been here many times, we're all on this journey together. No one's got to figure it out, but we, we, we have the opportunity every week to come here and to celebrate God and remember how good he is and how much he he loves us because we all know how easy it is to forget out there because the world beats us up and things happen and we question what's going on. And, and so when we come in here and we remember how good God is, man, that's a great thing. And so I hope you realize how great God is and how much he loves us. And that's why not only do we celebrate, but we also turn to his word. See, because in his word, God gives us instructions about how he wants us to experience what he's all about. You know, that song mentioned, yeah, yours is the kingdom. And Jesus said, I came to tell you what the kingdom is about, not so you can experience when you're dead, but you can begin to live in the reality and the power of that reality today. And so today we're, we're embarking on just a two-week, really, mini-series. And we're calling it, I Can Relate. Because I, I believe these conversations that we can have about many things in our life that are difficult, but I think there's two things that we can relate to, the challenges that they present in our life. And one of them is the opposite sex, and the other one's money. And those two things right there, man, they cause a lot of challenges in our life. And so for two weeks, we're just going to look at that. And today we're going to talk about the opposite sex. And I ran into a story about a guy named George. Uh, George had been married to his wife, Rita, for about 15 years. And, and George loved Rita so much. And her birthday was coming up, and so he really wanted to do something special for her birthday to just to show how much he loved her. And one morning he woke up, it was a couple weeks before her birthday, and she, he caught his wife, Rita, looking in the mirror. And she was kind of looking herself in the mirror, and, and, and he said, hey, hon, what's going on? She goes, you yeah, know, I don't know. I just wish I was six. And right there, he knew what he had to do. So he planned his, this birthday party for her. And the morning she woke up on her birthday party, man, he had Mickey Mouse pancakes with Fruit Loops in them all set for her, right? And then after that, he, he said, we're going to the amusement park today and you get to ride all the rides. And so they did that. And let her eat cotton candy and gave her anything she asked for. And he, she, he, he gave it to her. On the way home, they, they stopped by McDonald's and got her a Happy Meal and let her get a chocolate shake too, right? And then the, he decided, you know what? You want to see a movie? So she wanted to go see a movie, got popcorn and her favorite candy, and man, just treated her like nothing else that day. Well, at the end of the day, she stumbles in the home and falls in bed, right? And, and so he says, so Rita, what was it like being six again? And she looked at him in a very puzzled look and said, I meant my dress size. <laughs> can you relate? You know, I, I think we can. See, because when it comes to the opposite sex, man, we try our best to understand what they're saying, to understand how we can meet their needs, and yet our best efforts sometimes fall short because we missed that one, right? And see, that's when it comes. I don't think anybody has to remind us the mystery about the dealing with the opposite sex at times. It can be difficult. From the way we communicate to the way we understand, when we work with, we deal with, it can be very difficult at times. And see, no matter what your interactions are with the opposite sex, obviously, you know, the number one thing that we deal with is probably in marriages and dating. And in light of Valentine's Day coming up, it's probably a good time to talk about this. But, but see, the interactions we have go beyond, and it's bigger than just marriage. See, because in your family, you have opposite sex with your siblings or your parents, you know, uh, moms to their sons and dads to their daughters. There's, there's challenges for us, for, for us to understand the difference of the opposite sex. But see, God wants us to understand the differences because something in the midst of his purposes allows us to discover something in the midst of those differences. And when it comes to the, the realities, I mean, if there's ever a time that our world really needs to embrace and understand the differences for healing and harmony, it's now. Because you think about the sex discrimination that's going on in the workplaces. And finally, the attention that the headlines are giving to it. And so as, an, as a country, a nation, as a world, we're actually dealing with it and talking about it, which is a good thing. With the sex trafficking and the sex trade industry that's going on, 
and the sexual exploitation that's happening in this world. In fact, miles from where we sit today, it happened last night. It might even be happening right now. It's a reality that we have to understand that these differences uh, kind of create things that shouldn't be in this world. With the sexual orientation kind of discussions and understanding and confusion that happens in this world, now is the time for us to understand what God's word really has to say about the differences and why it's part of his design. And I really believe that God wants to, us to understand each other and understand the differences so that he can bring healing and unity in his family, in the workplace, in his church, in the world. And it's up to us to pursue that understanding so real healing can begin. And I just have to say, I'm not an, opposite, uh, an expert in understanding the opposite sex. In fact, most of my lessons have come because I've misunderstood the opposite sex, right? I've learned what not to do. But yet at the same time, I've counseled a whole lot of couples. I've counseled individuals who, as they've discovered the differences and learned to embrace them rather than resist them, that healing has begun to take place. And so that's my encouragement for us today, to pursue this understanding of, of, and the challenges of understanding the differences. And it really starts with the creation of men and women. So if you have your outlines, pull those out of the programs. And, and I just want to talk about what God's story reveals to us about why he created men and women. And see, our first fill in there is that God's design, it expressed his desire for us to experience his reality. See, see God, his story in Genesis, in fact, you know, Genesis is the Greek word for in the beginning or the beginning of all things, origins. That's what Genesis means. And, and very in the beginning of God's story, he tells us of why he created everything. He created everything because he wanted to express who he was so that we could experience what he was all about. And it's, it's much like an artist or someone who creates something, who paints a picture or writes a song. They, they pour their heart and their soul into something. And their hope is that as they express themselves on canvas or in music or whatever the medium has, happens to be, that those who see it will experience what they were trying to express. See, it's the same way with God. When he created this world, he was expressing who he was so that we could experience what he's all about. In fact, his story in Genesis, right here in Genesis 1:27, it says it, tells us. It says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. See, after God created everything in this world that we can see, taste, touch, interact with, he then created us, male and female, in his image. He wanted us to experience what he was all about. Now, of course, you can choose not to believe that God created us. You can choose to believe that we're an accident or, or that we just happened. And, and if that's the case, there's really no purpose to our existence. We just exist. And if that's true, then the struggles that we have with the opposite sex, they're really not, there's no purpose to it. So it is what it is. And you can choose to navigate your world any way you want if that's what you choose to believe that we're here by accident. But if you embrace the fact that there is a purpose to the design, that God created these different differences on purpose, then you and I have an opportunity to experience an amazing reality. An amazing reality that as we embrace the differences, God can draw us together and it can improve the relationships that matter the most to us. Marriages, families, workplaces. Because God wants us to do that. In fact, when we look at the purpose of a design, there was an intentionality to why God created male and female and the gender differences. And so next fill in there, it's God's purpose was meant to help us complement each other and not complicate what matters. <laughs> the idea of compliment, not, not like saying nice things like, oh, nice hat, nice shoes, you know, nice jacket. You know, it's like nice hair, not, not, not that kind of compliment. The compliment like by taking two different things and joining them together to complete them. That's what God did. See, see God's story tells us that in the beginning, after God created all things, he then created man. Adam, first man. And why he created man first, I don't know, but he did. And the Bible tells us that he actually took dirt and formed it into the shape of a man. In fact, Adam actually means dirt man or earth man. That's what it literally means. And so he creates Adam, breathes life into him, allows him to rise and experience the goodness of life that God created. And then he interacts with the creation. But God saw that there was something not there that God wanted Adam to experience. You and I. And so because of that, God said, it's not good. And so he caused Adam to do something. In fact, he, he wanted to create someone else for Adam, but he didn't take more dirt. He actually made Adam fall into a deep sleep. And in the midst of that deep sleep, he took a portion of the image that God had created in Adam and formed Eve out of it. 
God had taken the image and separated and split it in a sense to make this the reality of completeness, but found in two separate things to complement each other, not complicate what matters. In fact, it's expressed here in Genesis 2.18. The Lord God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. <laughs> and ladies, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> well, that's obvious. Men have needed help since the day I met him, right? It's like, yeah. You know, but see, no, that, what he's saying there is he says, the truth is we need help from each other to understand the completeness of what God's all about. Outside of the differences, we'll never completely understand who God is. And that's why he created male and female. There's a purpose to it. And it was to draw us together to experience what he's all about. See, men were created in the image of God, but so were women. So for us to fully understand how God expressed himself, we have to learn to live together and work together. And when God made male and female different, very different, he knew exactly what he was doing. He did that on purpose. In fact, it wasn't to humor him and give him something to entertain himself by watching us trying to figure it out. It wasn't to make our life complicated. It was so that we would have a purpose in our existence. In fact, after that happened, God called his creation very good. With all the differences between the opposite sex and the challenges it prevents, presents to us, God says, that's a very good thing. It's very good that you have differences. It's very good that those differences create conflicts and challenges. It's very good that those relationships in the workplace are hard to deal with sometimes. But it's in the midst of embracing the very good reality that we're willing to understand how we can complement each other and not complicate what matters. So important we get that. And so again, when it comes to the idea, it needs our constant attention to be successful. And he's just constantly aware of the fact that there are differences, but there's a goodness to those differences for us to move forward. And that's why our last fill in this outline is, I think God expects us to seek understanding instead of being understood. If we're really going to understand the differences, we have to seek understanding and not trying to always be understood. See, when we seek understanding, what we'll experience is the unity he wants for us. How we fit together uniquely and specially. And if we try to be understood explaining ourselves, then what's gonna happen is we're gonna get frustrated because they don't understand what we're trying to say. They don't understand who we are. And then they're trying to explain it back to us and it's just gonna aggravate the problem. And that's the number one reason why men and women get into a conflict is because we can't express ourselves. We're trying to explain who we are and, and that only complicates the matter. And it, it widens the gap that's already there. And see, for us to understand each other is to not try to explain ourselves, but to seek understanding the differences. That's why Ephesians 4, 3 reminds the church, it reminds us, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. So man, we gotta work really hard to pursue understanding so that we can experience unity and harmony and healing in all the relationships that God wants for us, especially in the one that's the most challenging with the opposite sex. That's what God wants for us. We have to be able to do that. And so what I want to do this morning is look at some of the general differences between men and women. And I want to emphasize general because there's just no way we can, we can say, oh, men are like this and women are like that. But it's a general understanding of how God has chosen to wire men and wire women. And wiring is really important. It really is. I discovered that last year when I tried to hook up some smart thermostats in my houses, in my house, I mean, right? I thought I knew what I was doing. Oh, super easy. Five wires, red, white, blue, yellow, and what's the green one for? It's like, you know, and so I thought I could figure this out. Well, $600 and one expert later, I finally got it hooked up, but because I didn't know what I was doing. And see, you have to be careful with wiring because if you wire it wrongly, you can blow things up. <laughs> you can burn things out. Things can go bad. And so understanding wire is so important. And so as, as this week I was doing some research, I did some scientific kind of studying on, um, I read some scientific studies on human brain wiring. And it's interesting because as science brain research accumulates, it's becoming increasingly obvious that God has wired men and women differently. No shock to us, right? But again, studies have shown that we think differently, we process emotions differently, we make decisions differently, and we learn differently. But it's also interesting because science is realizing that we complement each other perfectly. The difference starts in the physical structure of the brain. New research is confirming that the brains of men and women are subtly different. For example, look at this picture about what men and women think about most. 
Uh-huh. See that? And guys, we know what you want for Valentine's Day. But see, they just want chocolate. All right. So that, that, that's all. We can move on now. Uh, uh, but seriously, though, the studies have shown that the human brain is wired very different between men and women. Look at this image here. It's a study on the connectivity in the brain. It was done by the University of Pennsylvania. And one of the lead researchers showed how the men brain on the, uh, the blue one uh, mainly focus on the left and right hemispheres, where women brain, the red, they cross over much more. And, and this is a quote from the study. He says, we found greater neural connectivity from front to back and within one hemisphere in males, suggesting that brain, men's brains are structured to facilitate connectivity between perception and coordinated action. In contrast, females, the wiring goes between the left and right hemisphere, suggesting that they facilitate communication between the analytical and the intuition. Well, I read that and I had to dumb it down because I didn't understand what he was saying, right? But as I read through that and did some the understanding, basically what he's saying is guys are really good at thinking and doing things. We just think about things and we do them. Where women tend to like work through things. They're constantly feeling their way through issues and problems. And that's what it's saying. In fact, when it comes to that, I think we prove it every time, you know, people get lost. Men don't need GPS. Men don't need maps because they're going to figure it out, right? We're just going to get it figured out. Where women are saying, no, no, pull over, get directions because we need help in this matter, right? And again, it, it, we know why guys don't want to follow directions because we're guys. We'll figure it out. We got this. And women, they just want to get direction because they're already running late and they don't want to be in later, right? It's like, that's, that's how we understand this, right? But you know, here, here's the key, this whole thing. It's a key quote from the lead researcher, Rajani Verma. And this is what he says. I love this. He says, these maps show us a stark difference and complementarity in the architecture of the human brain. I love this. Do you catch what he says? He says, what science is discovering is what God has revealed to us from the beginning. That men and women are different and it's by design and it's to complement each other. I mean, that is just, to me, that's so profound. When what was revealed to us from all time is being discovered today, so that's what truth does. And see, for us to embrace that and understand that when we realize that God has created us for a purpose and it's a good purpose and it's not to complement our, complicate our lives, it, it's to make our lives better. And man, we can embrace that and we can seek that understanding and therefore the healing, the unity and the, the restoration that God wants for us in all those relationships. So three things I, wanna, I, I think this kind of hits home for me as I think through this. Because of the different wiring that men and women have, when it comes to communication, men are wired to explain while women are wired to express. So when it comes to the idea of communication between men and women, it's based on how information is exchanged. Women communicate in a manner that's typically emotive, meaning they're, they're expressing their feelings about how they feel about the information they're giving or they're receiving. That's how they do it. They, they, they emotionally work through that information, how they feel about the information, how they feel about what happened. While men typically communicate in a manner that's informative, when they exchange information, they're basically giving the facts. They're informing what they see, not necessarily how they feel about it, how they see things. And, and that's some of the ways that uh, men and women exchange information. And that's why when a woman asks a guy how his day went, he basically deals with the facts. And he's got a grid of three answers that we all know of, right? He says, how was your day, honey? He says, well, it was either good, it was bad, or it was okay. Because he's just given the facts, right? But we know that the women, they don't want the facts, they want the feelings. Why was it a good day? Why was it a bad day? Why was it an okay day, right? And, and that's, that's what they want. And in contrast, the reason that men don't typically ask their wives how their day went is because the game's about to start and they don't have time for their answer, right? It's like, just being honest, right? And, and see, realizing the difference of communication will help us. It's because if, if we're getting misunderstanding, if we're not communicating well, then the gap increases. Then the difference increases and, and we feel farther apart, not closer together. And just understanding the difference in how we communicate is huge, especially in the next area where it's vital to problem solving. See, we need to work together to solve problems and we have to understand the differences. And when it comes to problem solving, men are wired to fix it while women are wired to figure it out. See, we've got to work through the problems together. And women tend to work through their problems by talking about it. 
right? Focusing more on how the problem makes them feel and then verbally working through those realities. And by doing that, as they express their feelings on the problem, it gives them clarity to move forward. They know how they feel and they know how to react and respond and they, they work their way through things, noticing how they feel about things. Where in contrast, men are talking about the problem while they're trying to fix it. Remember, because they're really good at doing and thinking at the same time. And so they're constantly trying to say, okay, we have a problem. What's the black? What's the white? What's the right? What's the wrong? And we're not necessarily trying to look at all the possibilities as much as just try to figure it out and try things in the moment. And often a man will step back from the problem to get a perspective so that he can see things. And again, we can see the frustrations that go this. A woman wants to work through the problems, talk through the problems, see how, have someone listen how she feels where a man's backing away from the problem to get a perspective. And again, once again, the differences can separate or they, if we realize it, they can draw us together. And it's important that we do that. And this is where God wants that complementarian reality to kick in for us. See, God, by making men and women different, not only the way we communicate, but how we solve problems, they're all based in a different need that he gave us as well. Because there's something that's driving the reasons that we do the things that we do. And it's a basic need that we have that are different. And as best as I understand it, here, when it comes to the needs that we have, men are wired to need support, while women are wired to need security. Now, I think it's really important we unpack this one. It's because a woman has a God-given need that he chose not to put in a woman for security. Security to protect himself from the great fears that she would have in this world. So we all have fears, but women tend to have different fears than men would do. And in that, God has given them a reason to need a man to meet that need of security in her life, to know that someone cares enough for her that she's not gonna be abandoned and left alone. Where men... And wants to know that he has support in the areas of his life where he lacks confidence. It's because, guys, we put on the show, we put on the bravado, we kind of try to come across all confident and stuff. But you know, deep down in each one of us, there's a feeling of insecurity. There's a feeling of lack of confidence. And, and the belief that, man, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And see, and that's where God has left that need to be met by a woman to give us the support that someone believes in us, even when we don't believe in ourselves. And that gives us a strength that God wants us to rely on each other as we help and complement each other. It's so important that we get that. So that's why in the middle of the night, when a man and a wife are lying in bed, and the woman says, honey, did you hear that? What she's really saying is, why don't you get your butt out of bed, go downstairs and make sure no one's in the house, right? It's like, right? That's what she's really trying to say. And when the guy says, you know what, why don't you pick the movie tonight? What he's really saying is, you know, I don't like chick flicks. If you really love me, you know what you're going to pick, the action adventure one, right? It's like, right, right. We, we say these things because really in those situations, a woman says, I need you to take care of me. I need you to take care of me because there's fears you'll never understand that I have because that's the way God wired me. And I just need you to take care of those needs. And where a man says, I need you to support me. Because there's insecurities in my life that I can't explain that you'll never understand that God has given me, but I just need you to believe in me. And I know I'm never gonna be able to explain how I feel and why I do the things that I do, but I just need you to say, I believe in you because I love you and I'm here for you. And, and that works out from marriages to family relationships, moms to sons, dads to daughters, working relationships, individuals in the workplace. When we understand the differences and we can understand how we can show that support and offer that security to each other. You know, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg and the differences and the challenges that it presents. And so on your outlines, I've, I've given, given two resources that I think are uh, really important. In fact, they're both written for marriages in mine, but, but I believe if you really wanna understand this more, you read these books, it'll give you a better understanding of how God has chosen to wire us differently. The first one is something, uh, a book called His Needs, Her Needs. It's by Dr. Willard Harley. And what, in this book, what he unpacks is the fact that men and women have 10 basic needs. But the top five needs for women and the top five needs for men are different. And how in those needs, God has wired us to meet those needs. Great book. Great book for us to understand. In fact, I believe even there's his, need, her, his, his needs, her needs for, for, uh, for parents and for families and, and things like that. So I'd encourage you to look into that. The other one is uh, a book written by Bill and Pam Farrell. I love the title. It's called Men Are Like Waffles like, and Women Are Like Spaghetti. <laughs> and it really focuses, not only an intriguing title, but it focuses on how men think 
and they compartmentalize their, their lives like a waffle with all squares. And as long as what you're talking about is connected to something he makes sense of, then he can stay there and, and talk about it. Where a woman is like spaghetti, where it's like, and not that it's a bad thing, but it's like they can make sense of things that just don't make sense to men because they see a connectivity that we don't. And it's so important, and again, this great read because it's in, in these things that we'll have a better understanding of the differences and how God has chosen to wire it in his good design and his good purpose. So I encourage you to get those books if you can. You know, we have to make sure we do our best to understand how the opposite sex is wired because when we do, we'll have better communication, better connection, and we'll be able to complement each other better. But if we don't, then what happens is more and more misunderstanding, more and more disconnect, and the gap widens. And our message in a tweet, and hopefully it's just a good reminder for us, is the greatest distance between the opposite sexes is misunderstanding. You know, if, if there's a gap in your life, it's a good chance that you just don't understand what they're doing. And maybe this week, there's someone you need to understand. Number, someone you need to take the responsibility for seeking understanding of that relationship. And, and maybe it's your marriage right now. Maybe it's someone in your family. Maybe it's a son or a daughter or a sibling or a parent. Maybe it's someone that you work with. It's just difficult to understand and you don't know why they are the way that you are. And maybe it's time that you seek understanding and allow these differences to change the way you approach them because perhaps give them a chance to express themselves rather than always have to defend themselves the way that you're treating them. And if we pursue understanding over being understood ourselves, I, I really believe we're gonna exercise and be more like Jesus wants us to be. See, because Jesus modeled this to us. Knowing that you and I would never understand the gap that was present between us and God. Jesus, no, we never understand it. So what did he do? He stepped into the picture to take care of the gap. And he proved it when he said on the cross, Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. They don't understand. Because God, they haven't seen love. They haven't seen someone who's willing to cross the line to seek the understanding. See, maybe that's our challenge this week. Maybe the person that you're struggling with, they just don't understand. And yet today, my hope is that you do understand there's a difference and it's a good difference. It's not a bad thing. And that you pursuing that understanding would bring a new harmony, <laughs> would bring a healing and a unity into the relationship that matters so much to you. I know that's what God wants. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, man, Lord, I thank you for your truth that reveals to us, God, your good design, your good plan, your good purposes in all these things, God. And so, Lord, we know that dealing with the opposite sex can be a real challenge sometimes, and a real difficult. But God, help us to have the courage and the humility to seek understanding instead of always trying to be understood. And Lord, it's in that, that Lord, I pray that you bring healing and restoration to marriages, to families, to workplaces, to your church, to the world, God, to show just how great your truth is. Thank you that we're discovering it together. And Lord, may we live it out to experience all that you want for us. Thanks for Jesus who makes it all possible. In his name we pray.